Back in January of 2000, Yoshi Inaba presented us with a, a challenge, which was to imagine what TMS should do to address the growing youth market in the United States. And that was uh, just coming off of uh, a lot of activity that had been done under the Genesis name. We were able to take part of the group of people that had worked on that project and move them over into what eventually became Scion as we went through this kind of exploratory phase. And at the time, there was a lot of talk about change in the industry and where was that going to go. We really had the, the kind of the whole world at our fingertips in terms of what we were open to exploring. So Scion needed to be stylish, trend leading, it needed to represent an active individual, uh, it needed to represent someone who was individualized, and then it needed to be real or authentic. When I first started Genesis, it was a very small group of people that had an extremely huge task to, to accomplish. When I look back on it, I was like, oh my god, like, I can't believe that I wasn't as nervous as I probably would be today if I was asked to do something like that. <laughs> Outside the box thinking, side has always been kind of a tryout, you know, where it's okay to make a mistake, or it's okay to build something different. When the first XB came out, and it was a bold statement, right? It was like, an icon like a very iconic, love me or hate me box-like looking car. Right out of the gate, there was a very strong brand identity combined with a very aggressive, strong product. It really impacted people. People were like, I love it or I hate it. When you see something you've never seen before, it takes your brain a minute to process, what am I looking at? But then instantly, I loved it because it was so different. I think like most people thought, this is a box on wheels. But that's what made it unique. That's what made it different. That's what made it special. They created an individuality taste of their own and expressed themselves on that XB platform. And they did hardwood floorings in the back, and the back seats as well, and the and front floors as well. It gives us a great time to express who we are through our cars. It's, just, it's a good community too. So. The chandeliers that I have in the back over here, those were made by myself. It took quite a long time to actually put together and get it to the right shape. We were going to take uh, the Scion design, or uh, at least the ones that we got in the Scion event, and uh, we cast them, we shaped them, and now they're metal. You can have a street full of these cars, and each one will have its own identity. There was probably a bit of an underdog mentality that brought them all together. I mean, we were this little teeny brand that people couldn't even pronounce and you had these weird boxy square cars that no one had ever seen before on American streets. And so your mindset to want one of those probably meant you thought differently than most people. And pretty soon when you saw one XB owner probably meet another XB owner, there was like this instant bond of like, hey, we're kind of us against the world. We did launch pretty heavily with TV because at the end of the day, we did need awareness. But once we had that first kind of a level of awareness seated, that's when we went a little more underground. That's when we really went and started to rely on literally hundreds of events around the country each month. Some of them very, very small. A lot of other corporations, big name corporations, come in just trying to throw money at something. But a lot of people that are within those communities don't see that as being genuine, don't being real. Taking a product and not just throwing it there and putting a rope around it and saying, look at me, but don't touch me, but let's integrate what we do into the community until the movement, which makes it part of the lifestyle. Non-profit 
non-mainstream, non-traditional marketing tactics. Scion had a little bit of an against the grain uh, element to its brand from the products to the way we communicated to our sales process. Consumers were in a place where they were looking for different ways to engage with brands and I think some of the one-on-one -on -one marketing we did and grassroots uh, events focus was a good transition to the digital era we're in today. How the brand kind of came out into the wild was just really, really well done. You know, from, you know, above the line to grassroots. Supporting young emerging talent that no one had ever heard of. There was a lot of really intelligent deals that were made with artists. You know, to people that were kind of within the culture, it was really clear that this wasn't somebody Googling some big DJ or big artist and going, hey, let's pay these guys a lot of money that they show up at one corporate event and that's it. We never intended to start owners clubs and they just kind of naturally started and then once we got involved with them, you realize the power. I could make one phone call or send one email or one text and I would have 20 signs show up the next day with probably the most passionate owners you've ever seen. And again, that was unscripted. That was completely organic to have these owner clubs really starting to come together. We didn't try to come in and, and buy loyalty. We didn't try to come in and buy acceptance. It really just came through in the way that we represented ourselves and here was the brand and this is what we're about. I would say the number one would be the event that we pulled off on Alcatraz. You know, if you can imagine negotiating with, you know, the federal government to produce, you know, a branded event on an island like Alcatraz, you know, shut it down to the general public, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was quite an endeavor, but I don't think it'll ever be, you know, replicated again. What the team at Scion has continued to pr prove and consistently deliver over time is the fact that there are unique ways to go to market with vehicles. There are unique lifestyle events. There are uni unique ways to go after social media. Part of the Scion, you know, philosophy really had to be not just the product, but it also had to be the experience that somebody went through. You had to have a different sales process to get people to share that same excitement we had about the product. It made it that much easier to sell it. With things like pure price, it's gonna help uphold the front end profitability of it. You're not gonna make a killing off of every car, but that person coming in, remember, that new to Toyota family, that new to the TMS brand number for Scion is still really high. Pure price philosophy is something that's core to what we do at Scion. You understand what the cost is. We embody truthfulness in this sales process. Scion having one price makes it easier for customers and, and ourselves and accessorizing the car, personalizing it the way you want it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's not just about selling a car, it's about how do I get them interested in my dealership, my dealer brand, and get them being a part of me and a customer for life. I just really see Scion as being the gateway to really getting some people into your store. Scion's always been an emotional brand. It's always generated an emotion. Sometimes it's been love, sometimes it's been hate. But it's never been someone ever had just an ambiguous opinion of Scion. They had the Scion story, it was written up. And we had a line in the Scion story that talks about, we're not the biggest and we don't want to be. And that instantly resonated with people. I mean, we operate out of an old warehouse on the Toyota campus. And it goes back to that underdog mentality and once you tell people that, they still, you're still going to have the haters. There's still going to be people that you're never going to convince. But the ones that I saw instantly change, it was just because they didn't know. It was just a lack of knowledge. When you're at Scion and you're this little teeny small team trying to run a car brand, the thing about being in the building was you all immediately realized that everyone's going to wear more than one hat. Everyone's going to be held accountable because you, if you have something, something go wrong, something fail, Everyone knows who owns that. 
Scion is a brand that is run by an elite group of entrepreneurs from all different lifestyles, walks, walks of life and experiences and industry experience. It's not a, a mass marketed consumer automotive brand. And I think there's a lot of enthusiasts out there that respect the individuality and the fact that Scion stands for something different. The whole notion of movement, I think, permeated the organization. By the time Scion really came to life, I think it had a lot of support. You know? And I think it was really interesting to work on the project from the beginning because we were able to, to create so many like-minded people, which I think is often lacking when you're trying to make change. You know, People have lots of different opinions about how to do things. By the time the brand came to be, I think we had everybody pointing the same direction lead a team that's got the benefit of both being a uh, small in-house entrepreneurial group but uh, with all the benefits of working for a big company so it's kind of permission to operate outside of the norm so you get to look at product concepts that we would never consider for the Toyota Lexus brands and also propose new ideas that would never fit in the box that we need to operate in. Science gives us the opportunity to try some things in a lower risk environment so experiment with our XB and XD sales before we take that to Camry and Tundra. Uh, I think with some of the shifts taking place with consumers today and the retail purchase environment um, that experimentation ability is probably even more important today than when we launched. The exciting aspects of Sion were really just how unscripted it was and how free we were to kind of push the envelope, whether it would be marketing, the way we distributed the cars, and really just thinking in a non-traditional sense. And that was refreshing because Toyota was a very traditional company. And to have that freedom to make mistakes and see what worked, the one thing about Scion is we consider ourselves like a Scion family, but when every single one of the dealerships and those customers that come into that, that showroom or that purchase a Scion from five years ago, they're part of the family. So one thing as a sales consultant that you can do is to really continue those grassroots efforts within your dealership to continue that fostering of that family. Because we have fantastic new Scion products now, but unless we continue to invite and educate and showcase what we have, to our previous customers, then I think we're missing a tremendous opportunity. The most exciting thing about Scion to me today is the commitment of the people. You have under 25 people, Scion Associates, supporting the field, supporting the dealers across this nation, and they have never been more committed to the future success in the next 10 years of Scion success. We love cars, we all do love cars. Having a new brand launch in the United States is, it doesn't happen all the time. And I'm just happy to be part of it. And you know, it's, it's just very exciting. Training is obviously key. Um, the more people that, the more sales consultants that we don't have that really not, not just understand the, the, you know, the horsepower and the specs of the vehicle, but also understand what the brand um, means. The more we can get back to the core of appealing towards the dealership's family. I always take what I learned in sign is that you need to consistently think outside the box, push the box, blow it open if you will. Um, because again, there are elements and things of ways in which we can think about our processes within our business, our product scheme, and how we interact with our customers that don't need to fall into the convention of what we've traditionally done. Well, there's been a lot of challenges that uh, have been thrust at Scion and certainly um, the cycle of products has been something we've been paid particular attention to, but I think how we've handled that uh, is an example for Toyota and Lexus through the Release Series program. The Release Series has kept our products fresh on the showroom floor, generated traffic, generated interest, given us a um, something to talk about at auto shows, um, but we all would have liked to have more Scion products more frequently, more new products, uh, but we're on the verge of something great, and you'll hear more about that soon. 
again, happy about the product that's coming, happy about some of the process experiments we got in the market, and uh, hoping to combine the two for, for some good results. I think for the future of science that excites me is it's still unwritten. And when you think about where can it go and where it's been, it's not a sprint, it's a long-term play. And with the way the world is changing, the way that retail is changing, the way that technology is just changing all of us, Scion is the best position to react to that. Because again, Scion's the little teeny boat that can turn quicker. When you get to the bigger ships, that takes a lot more time for that to change.